Welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Jen and I will be filling in for Lee until he comes back. As Lee did before me, I too will be narrating the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. These videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and to show people that there is indeed life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To the return viewers, welcome back. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy today's narration. Today's experience was emailed into the channel by Tara. In her experience, she details passing away while headed to the operating room for a C-section to deliver her son who came two months too soon. She details taking a walk with Jesus and seeing herself being breathed into existence by God. She also describes being shown a potential future that begins to take place starting with an earthquake in 2042 and eventually becoming an all-out world war, which thankfully ends in 2053 without any nuclear weapons being used. Hi, Lee. My name is Tara. My friends call me Tartar. Don't ask. I want to first tell you I am sorry to hear about your diagnosis and also tell you that I am praying for you. Your channel has changed my life since I found it. It has given me the courage to share my experience with those around me. Three weeks ago, I shared what happened to me with my mom, dad, and younger brother. A week ago, I shared it with my husband and the rest of my family. I received a lot of stares, but overall everyone seemed to be supportive. I almost wonder if they believed me or chalked it up to postpartum depression that my mind was making up. I don't know whether that is the case or not, but it feels really good getting it off of my chest. I find myself typing this out, wondering just how to explain it to those who haven't died, or much less seen the other side. So I'll start at the beginning and go from there. In January 2021, I found out that I was pregnant with our fourth child. From the moment of conception, something felt off with this one. Two months into the pregnancy, I was diagnosed with placenta previa. For all of you men out there, this is when the placenta grows near the opening of the uterus. It increases the risk of miscarriage and other health issues. Anyway, the placenta previa was the least of our worries, as we had the amniotic fluid tested to determine what issues the baby could have, and we weren't given the best news. We were told that the baby had a high probability of Down syndrome. The thought of having a special needs child at 40 scared me. Some of my first thoughts were, what would happen to him or her when I died? Who would take care of this kid? Naturally, the topic of abortion did come up, though my husband and I immediately shot that idea down because of our religion. I was put on bed rest and told that I would need to avoid any sort of laborious tasks. Around the seven-month mark, I felt a gushing sensation and screamed for my mom to call the ambulance. To keep things a bit more PG, what I thought was my water, was me bleeding out due to a hemorrhage. I was rushed to the hospital and immediately prepped for an emergency C-section. I was wheeled back to the operating room and then I lost all consciousness. The strange thing about dying and death is watching it happen. I trailed my body back to the operating room where the doctor muttered some choice words and said, We're losing her. Get her cut open. We have to get this baby out. Then we can worry about life-saving measures for the mom. I watched as they cut me open and took my premature son out. I remember hearing the doctor say that he didn't know if the baby would make it and to begin life-saving measures on me. As they were stitching up my C-section, one nurse was pumping my chest and the other giving me oxygen. I watched all of this in pure amazement. The last thing that I remember the doctor saying was we got to shock her. It was at this time that I was immediately pulled upward at a speed that I will describe as falling off of a cliff upward. Do you remember how fast you seem to fall when you're in a dream? Well, it feels like that speed, but only going up. I started going faster and faster until I came to an abrupt stop. Welcome, Tara. We've been expecting you. I heard a voice say in my head. Looking around, my eyes began to become less cloudy, and I was able to see where I was. I was in a beautiful crystal-like city, one that no amount of fairy tales can ever compare to. 
I heard the voice again. Welcome home, Tara. We've been expecting you. I looked around until I saw who was speaking. The man that I saw was not the most handsome, but he wasn't bad-looking either. He had a brown beard, brown eyes, and the most beautiful smile that I have ever seen. His skin was sort of olive color, sort of like the tan you would see a surfer with. He wore a robe and around his waist a golden-colored sash. I couldn't help but be mesmerized. You were waiting for me? Yes, replied the man. But why me? Tara, you have completed your mission. It is time for you to come home. The voice gently said, No, it is not my time. I just had a baby. I remember everything. I need to be there for my baby. I said, getting more and more anxious. It didn't matter that this place brought me peace, joy, and no pain. I wanted to go back for my children. I knew deep down they needed me and nothing was going to stop me from getting back to them. Why do you wish to go back so badly? The man asked as if he were puzzled that I didn't want to stay. I need to be there for my babies. My babies need me. I have to go back. Please let me go back, I begged. You have all of your loved ones here for you. Are you willing to give all of that up? He asked. I am, I said. He smiled as he said that I was the first soul to beg to go back instead of begging to stay. After much thought, he finally said, Your body is not ready for you to go back. If you go back now, that body will die, and you will not be able to return. Walk with me, he said as he put out his hand. I grabbed his hand and we started to walk together. The love in his touch made me second-guess my decision on wanting to go back. As we walked through the streets of the Crystal City, I began to see my life playing out before my eyes. I have listened to enough NDEs to know that this was a life review, but mine was way different. I didn't see a screen or video playback device. Instead, what I saw is what I will refer to as soul after images. I saw myself being born from the mouth of God. I was breathed into existence. I then saw myself begging God to send me to earth to be with the parents that I had chosen. I will skip the boring parts, but saw myself getting married to my husband and our kids being born. I saw my death again on the operating table. I don't know if it is the fact that the soul is so pure here, but when the life review ended, I found myself holding on to this man, crying. It's okay, he said as he held on to me. This happens to everyone when they re-experience their life from the perspective of my father. Of course, I muttered. How could I have not realized that I was there with Jesus? Perhaps it was my preconceived notions that Jesus was this completely different-looking being, or perhaps I wasn't as in tune with religion as I thought I was. My Lord, forgive me for not recognizing who you are. Please forgive my ignorance. He assured me that there was no need for me to be begging for forgiveness. He then told me that this is what awaits me when I come back. As he said that he pointed to what would be the home that his father had prepared for me. The more that he showed me, the more that I found it harder and harder to want to go back. I think that Jesus felt my hesitation and was kind as he kept saying that I didn't have to go back. I knew, though, that I did. Before I was sent back, I was shown a future that may or may not come true. Before I tell you what it is, I want people to know that nothing is set in stone. In 2042, there will be a great earthquake that splits not only the western United States, but also most of Asia. Parts of California does get swallowed by the sea, and Japan and Korea are wiped off of the face of the earth. This, in turn, leads to a lot of mini-wars at first, that eventually around 2048, things coalesce into a world war. As with all wars, everything is fought over resources. The war finally ends in 2053, but not before the three major superpowers, Russia, China, and the United States, come close to an all-out nuclear war. It is time for you to return, Jesus spoke to me. I'm ready. I awoke to the sound of the doctor saying, hit her again. I remember screaming out and then passing out again. I came out of the C-section with three broken ribs from the CPR. During recovery, I kept asking the nurses how long I was dead. They all would get this look in their eyes and quickly change the subject. Eventually, I stopped asking about it, because I knew I would never get a straight answer from them. I know that all of this must seem a bit out there, but what I saw was true. I do not know how long I was dead. 
I don't know if it was minutes or even seconds, but I do know that I was home and I decided to come back for my kids. As I said in the opening portion, telling this to my family has gotten me a lot of weird stares, but no one has been mean to me regarding this experience. Oh, and before I forget, yes, my son made it. He has no signs of Down syndrome or any issues from being born almost two months too early. Lee, I know that God is healing you, just as he healed my son and just as he allowed me to come back. God is great all the time, even when we don't ask him to be. Take care and thank you and Jen for reading this. Note from Lee. Thank you, Tara, for sharing your experience. I want to say that I am pleased that your baby boy made it through without any health issues. I also want to say that this isn't the first NDE I have read regarding a potential world war. It is, however, the first one that I have read of an earthquake pretty much swallowing up the islands of Japan and both North and South Korea. I can only imagine the displacement is the cause of the mini wars and eventual world war. Lastly, I want to thank you for your prayers and tell you that they mean a lot to me. That does it for today's experience. Do you think we are headed for a new world war? Do you believe that an earthquake is powerful enough to swallow up parts of California as well as Japan and the Korean Peninsula? Let us know what you thought in the comment section below. As always, continue to stay safe and be blessed. Thank you all for sticking around to listen to the donator shoutouts. For those of you who are new to the channel, this area is where we thank those who were kind enough to donate to the channel via Super Thanks and by buying Leah coffee. It is here that we also thank those who continue to watch these videos. Let's get on with it. Joseph Zimmerman Brittany's World SH Times 4 Athena Anna Harry Fisher and Michael Noel and Renee Carr. Thank you all for your kindness. And as always, thank those of you who continue to hang around and watch these videos. You all make it worth it. Before you all go, can I bring something to your attention? Only about 40% of those of you who view these videos are subscribed to the channel. Can we try to get this to 50% or more? Remember that subscribing is free, and it does help the channel grow.